All right. Good morning, Risen Savior. How's everybody doing? Hey, good. Good to hear. All right. We're so thankful to have you guys joining us here this morning. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started here with our opening song, Graves in the Gardens, here. So once I get my music set.
kingdom of my shepherd is, whose gifts fail and never, I have nothing like if I am his, and he is mine forever, and he is mine forever. Streams of living water flow, my ransom so needed. And where the burden pastures grow, with fruit celestial feeding, never failing, ruler of my heart, everlasting, lover of my soul. take this time right now to share the peace with one another. So please um, greet your neighbors, those around you, and uh, say hi and welcome in pe with the peace of the Lord.
Okay, a couple quick notices. You guys, for some of you keeping track, you may notice it's the third Sunday of the month. Um, a little off this week, so we don't have communion this Sunday. Um, didn't get a um, we didn't get a guest pastor in for this weekend, um, so we don't have that. But we will have uh, Pastor Schmuck will be here next weekend for confirmation service. Um, so it'd be nice if you guys could all attend there for the 9:30 service. Um, our confirmands are listed on the back here if you want to be praying for them. So that's coming forward, and we'll have communion then. And in the absence of a pastor, we have Ron Friedrich will be delivering the message this morning with um, using the notes from Pastor Paulus. And if you remember um, when he came here a couple weeks ago, he did a really great job. So Ron, our head elder, is going to be leading that. So a big thank you to him as well. And um, just want to say a big thank you, kind of pause for a second, for all our elders here that they're taking on a lot bigger role and responsibilities here in the absence of a pastor. So please keep them in your prayers and give them a thank you as well. So, um, yeah, if you want to, <laughs> round of applause, really, actually, too. But yeah. Mm. All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? God's grace knows no bounds. Through the sacrifice of his Son, the bridegroom of the church, he makes us his holy bride. Anticipating the heavenly wedding feast, let us seek God's grace now and call on him for forgiveness and mercy. take a moment of silence to reflect on our sins. Jesus promised the disciples, your sorrow will turn into joy, and he promises the spring of the water of life without payment, as it says in Revelations. As a called, in, no, as a servant, that was not corrected, as a servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, it's time for, we do have Sunday school this week. Um, I want to notice we don't have it for the next, I think, two Sundays. We won't, but for this Sunday, we will have Sunday school. Uh, Betty Friedrich's in the back. Um, if you have any Sunday school age kids, we'd like to go with her, so. Today's first scripture reading is from Acts chapter 11. Now the apostles and brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him saying, you went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying in a trance. I saw a vision and something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals, beasts of prey, and reptiles, and birds of the air, and I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me. We entered the man's house, and he told us, 
how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us in the, at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also I say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty.
Good morning. We join in a, uh, excuse me, we join in a word of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The words from Pastor Paulison come to us with the title, Home at Last. What a thought. It's from Revelations 21, a portion of which we've heard already. So, does everything just seem to get old over time? In each experience and moment, are we searching for nothing more than fulfillment and ecstasy? Even the places and relationships that were once exciting, do they simply get old and lose their shine after a while? Everything just gets old. Church gets old. New people will sometimes say, oh, I am so glad we found this church and we love your preaching. God really speaks to our lives here. Then I wonder, will they leave when it gets old and, it not, and it's not so emotional? Religion gets old. At the time of the revelation, Judaism was thousands of year old, years old and had become cynical and full of dead rituals, so dead that they murdered the Messiah when he did come. People get old. How many times have you met someone and were really drawn by some characteristic or part of their personality? But after a while, even that shine wears off. On a physical level, everything gets old. Over time, everything breaks down or eventually dies. On a personal level, relationships can get old and we, we can think then the mystery is gone. For some of us, even God gets old. But because we, th we think we have him, because we think we have him figured out, perhaps this is the reason many of us get cynical as we get older, because it's all just getting old. The people living in Asia Minor at the time of the Revelation were probably a dispersed group of Jews from the di diaspora. Jerusalem was their real home, Abraham, the Exodus, David, Solomon, the 12 disciples, the place where Jesus walked, the temple, where they met God and, and where, even where John would have had his memories of Jesus. Jerusalem was their history and the land that they had longed for, but in 70 AD, the Romans laid siege to it. They plowed the temple into the ground. All the energy is gone, laid to waste. Perhaps the thought they could never go home was their thought. This is getting old. It all gets old, but then John had a vision, and all things become new, fresh and exciting with life, in a way that we could not even imagine. He sees a time when things are alive with excitement. He blinks his eyes, and he sees a garden coming down from God out of heaven. Nope, he sees a city. What does a city imply? For me, it implies bustling and full of life. The color and newness are amazing. The Bible is full of wonderful promises, but perhaps the most wonderful of all is this, from 1 Corinthians 2.9, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. There are many things we do not know about heaven and what it will be like, because it is beyond our ability to comprehend. One thing we do know is that it will be nothing like what we have experienced, and it will have a newness that never gets old. But one thing we can be sure of is that it will fulfill our greatest longings. It will dazzle us with its beauty. It will obliterate our greatest problems with its power and splendor. It will be greater than anything we could imagine or dream. It will be a place where love 
and joy will, will reign unspoiled. God is busy preparing all of this for us. Jesus said, I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be where I am. He said that in John 14, verses 2 and 3. Jesus' death and resurrection were to give us life and forgiveness of our sins so that we are preparing for this place right now. The neat thing is where it is. It means being with Jesus. Unfortunately, heaven really gets mixed reviews. People see heaven as sitting on a cloud wearing a halo while other while little angels play harps as they float through the heavens. What a picture. <laughs> Others see it as an unending church service or singing hymns for all eternity. Some think of it as a sort of celestial retirement city. It all seems like an apparition, so unreal and at times not that exciting. There is so much that could be said about heaven, but let me first say this. Heaven will be real. Heaven will not come in some ethereal existence where we float about as bodies, as spirits without bodies. Why would God take the trouble to create a new earth if there was not going to be any one to live on it? Why would we be given new bodies if we were not going to live in a material world. It is my understanding of scripture that we were originally created to live as earth dwellers in a material world. Adam and Eve were not placed on a cloud, but on earth. Heaven will be Eden restored. We have been living east of Eden since Adam and Eve sinned, but the day will come when the original paradise God intended us to be a part of will be restored. Jesus opens it back up for us. The new Jerusalem is not floating in space but comes down to a new earth. The Bible says in 2 Peter, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will declare, will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. The old earth will have passed away, and God will create a new earth, which will be the home of righteousness. T.S. Eliot wrote, We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all exp of our exploring will be s to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. If this fallen world, in all of its brokenness, can be so wonderful, what must heaven be like? So here is the second truth about heaven. Heaven will be right. It will be a place of righteousness or rightness. All the wrongs of the world will be made right. It will be a place where everything evil is absent and everything good is present. Everything sad will be gone and only joy will exist. Everything disappointing will disappear and everything exciting will appear. Everything depressing will be gone and everything hopeful will come. Everything violent and hateful will be gone, and everything born of love will prevail. Every unfaithfulness will be in the past, and steadfast loyalty will be present. Everything detestable will be gone, and everything desirable will abide with us. Every sickness will be gone, and complete wholeness will take over our lives. Every struggle, frustration, and failure will be over, and only success will be possible. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, 
for the old order of things will have passed from Revelations 21.4. Every wrong done to you in this world will have been made right. Every injustice will meet with justice. Every sorrow will be reversed. And joy will wash over you like a waterfall. The prophet Isaiah wrote, Behold, I will create a new heaven and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. Isaiah 65, 17. He goes on to say, They will not toil in vain or bear children doomed to a misfortune, for they, for they will be a people blessed by God, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. From Isaiah 65. The corrupted fallen world, part of the world, will be gone, and God will restore the world to the way it was meant to be in the beginning, unspoiled by human sin. Everything false will disappear, and everything good will prevail. The Bible says in Revelations 21, 27, nothing impure will enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Only those have received all that God has to offer through his Son. There will be a raised, they will, there will, there we, sorry, there we will be raised again and have pure, perfect bodies. What age do you want to be? <laughs> what would you change about yourself? In heaven, or on a new earth to be more precise, there is nothing you will want to change. Absolute and pure acceptance. We will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed, from 1 Corinthians 15. The physical description here will be rewarding. Heaven will be rewarding. John does the best he can to describe heaven, but he is limited by language and experience. He has never seen anything like this before, and he finds it impossible to fully depict what he witnesses in his vision. He talks about walls made out of translucent gold, built on a foundation made with precious jewels, gates made of a single pearl, and streets of gold. The richness of heaven is so great that they, are, that they use gold as paving material. Jews are used, jewels are used for foundation stones. What a place this must be. It is so rich and real that the things of greatest value on earth are commonplace. It is so beautiful that he describes it with the best comparisons he can make. But finally, heaven will be the residence of God. It says in Genesis that they walked with God in the garden. Can you imagine walking and talking with God? How fun it would be just to sit down and have coffee with God. <laughs> well, okay, maybe not coffee. <laughs> Let's uh, get back to the main point here. The greatest reward of heaven will be God himself. Nothing we see or experience will be greater than the fact that we are with God and see him face to face. Paul wrote, Now we shall see a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully even as I am fully known. That's from 1 Corinthians 13. How wonderful it will be to be in the presence of God where we will be perfectly known to him and know what is what, and know we are perfectly known and loved. Just wait a second. Perfectly known? Wow! Don't we all desire so deeply to be known and loved for who we are. John writes in Revelation, I heard a loud voice 
from the throne, saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. We will have no greater reward or relationship than being with our wonderful God and seeing him face to face. In C.S. Lewis's wonderful books, The Chronicles of Narnia, the characters who have lived in Narnia have, compl have completed their time and work there. In a closing chapter entitled, Further Up and Further In, Aslan, the lion who represents Christ, has come for them in order to take them home. They are headed away from Narnia and are about to enter Islam's, Aslan's land. But they are met with familiar scenes. One of the characters cries out, I have come home at last. This is my country. I belong here. This is the land I have been looking for all my life, though I never knew it till now. The reason why we are loved, why we love the old Narnia, is that it sometimes looked a little like this. I believe that when we enter the real heaven, we will say, this is the land I have been looking for all my life, though I never knew it till now. The reason we loved, why we love the old earth so much is that it seemed like a little like this. It will be a new earth, restored and redeemed, the place we were meant to live. At that time we will say with the psalmist, the boundary lines have fallen for me in the pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. Psalm 16. C.S. Lewis said, if you read history, you will find that the Christians who did the most for the present world were precisely those who thought the most of the next. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you join me in prayer? Let us look forward to heaven as our home and help us to share with others the joy of knowing our God who never grows old. Amen. We stand for the prayer. O oh, gracious Father, you led your holy apostles to ordain ministers for the proclamation of your word and the faithful administration of the sacraments of Christ. Grant to this congregation the guidance of the Holy Spirit to choose a suitable pastor according to your will for the blessings of your church in this place. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord, is made, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements, which I think are coming from the back. Yes. So a voice from the back for our announcements today. <laughs> um, we do have a funeral this week. Um, if For those who are interested in attending Avery Escom's funeral, um, we will have a viewing on Monday night from 5 to 7 that is open to the public. And that is a prayer vigil, visitation, and viewing. And then on Tuesday at 10.30 is the funeral service. Um, I encourage us all to be in prayer for the Eskom family and for those who can attend and support, um, please do so. On a lighter note, um, as we move forward, next week will be confirmation in this 9.30 service. And so please be praying for Jaron, Angelica, and Liam as they will be confirmed next Sunday in the 9.30 service. And then June 5th, coming up, we have our summer kickoff. 
which will be one single service at 9 a.m. indoors, and then we'll move outside for some food and fellowship and some fun games, and so we hope you can join us for that as well. Um, and just know that as we head into the summer, as we are still without a pastor, um, we will be communicating with you as best we can, but we are a little short-staffed. So we thank you for your patience as we try to make sure that we're keeping you up to date with everything that you need to know and all that's going on here at church. Thanks. And I ask that we stand um, for our closing song, I Will Rise. One other One quick other note quick on the announcements, yeah. um, June 12th, just another reminder, we're going to our new service schedule then. So this service will be moving to 1030 starting June 12th. Um, after we have that summer kickoff, we'll go to 1030 service and we'll have a 915 to 1015 uh, Bible study hour. So uh, just keep that in mind as we go forward and we'll sing our last song yet. It's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome
Thank you for worshiping with us. Go in peace and serve the Lord.